to the Sports Dynasty Podcast. I'm Trevor, and this is Juan. Before we get started, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play Radio, Stitcher Play Radio, at Podcast Dynasty on Twitter. We are on Facebook and Instagram. Join the Facebook group. Be a part of the conversation. So this is football season is coming. coming. Yes, we're only less, less than, than a week. week. Away. I cannot wait. Hence why we are trying to hurry up with these guy episodes because we needed a break. Yes, last week was just... Yeah, woo. we like, got burnt out kind of quick. As you probably know, we'll be uploading, what, like four episodes or the last four weeks? A, a week? Like, nah, we needed a break. And we appreciate you all for being a part of it, definitely, because that was... 100%. More definitely worth it. Yeah, but there will be no guests for the last two episodes because we need to hurry up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're trying to hurry up. We got a big episode on Monday, or I don't know if I'm uploading Monday or Tuesday, but Monday or Tuesday, our big predictions episode is going to be that, so we're trying to, like, you know, get that going. Yeah. So we need this to hurry up, you know? Yes. So we're, we're going to continue our coverage with the AFC yeah. South. Second to last. Yeah. Don't worry. It won't be taking this long because most of these people in this division suck. Yeah, it's true. So, so we're going to keep it real. Keep it real. We're going to start off with. The suckiest. One of them that sucks. Sucks. The Jacksonville Jaguars. They finished twelve and fourteen. They were two and fourteen. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. Ooh, I'm sorry. Two and fourteen. Excuse me. <laughs> that, that, that's giving them too much credit. That's like their entire record in, in the last like five years combined. Yeah. <laughs> they probably is. not including twenty seventeen. Yeah, not including. Yeah. Um, they were two and fourteen. They were the number one pick in the NFL draft. Yeah. They managed to be worse than the New York Jets. They managed to be worse than them. And it's that, because they the other team accidentally won, and yeah. they saw that. So you're like, nah, we definitely tanking now. Nah, yes. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. Those two teams were on a tank, like a tankathon. They were like, who's gonna suck more? Um, they were 30th in offense, surprisingly. 21st in passing, 28th in rushing, 31st in defense. And I think everybody saw that. Uh, 27th in passing, 30th in rushing. I'm surprised they went 32nd. I forgot who was 32nd. Y'all probably know. It was in the guy somewhere. Uh, yeah. Let's continue on. I gave them, I think, a C for their. Uh, off season. Yes, um, veteran additions included C.J. Bearhard, um, Carlos Hyde, Marvin Jones, Philip Dorsett, Chris Manhurts, um, Roy Robertson Harris. This might have been the division that did the most trades. Yes, because this team and the next team they trade a lot. Malcolm Brown, G. High Ward, Shaq Griffin, Rayshon Jenkins, Rudy Ford, and Jamal Agnew. They they got a lot more than that, but I mean. Who cares? Oh, and Urban Meyer. Uh, and Urban Meyer is now the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars for now. <laughs> I, yeah, I, yeah. He will last the season. I don't know about after that, but for, for he now, last the for season. Now, I'll give it one. Yeah, I agree. Um, Off-season losses. They lost D.D. Westbrook, uh, Keelan Cole, Tyler Eifert, Josh Oliver, Abby Jones, D.J. Hayden, and your favorite tight end slash quarterback slash football player, Tim Tebow. It's no longer here. Oh, I didn't even put in the guy. Yeah, I knew that I had to. I forgot. I, I seen it. I <laughs> seen it. Yeah, so, oops. Whoopsie. Anywho, the draft. They and also, then, again, they also traded a lot of people. And I did put the Gardner Ministry trade in here. Oh, yeah. That's, that has nothing to do with the offseason. That's preseason, but I still put yeah, it in anyway. Yeah, and Gardner Ministry yeah, is going to. Which is stupid. I, I oh, agree. my gosh. I agree. That Why did they? How you trade a great, who's supposed to be a starter, a great backup, who you're paying two cents for? For just a six, a conditional six round pick. I'm sorry. Like what? The, what do they do? I, I'm honestly speaking. I think Shad Khan should just stick to to yeah, wrestling, to English football and wrestling. He's an English football. You know you're doing that too. No, um, he owns um, I think Tottenham, or he he owns a no, um, Fulham, Fulham. I didn't even know he did that. Yeah, yeah he owns Fulham, the the Premier League team oh. in England. Even though they suck, but <laughs> oh, what a correlation! They they suck, but even the Fulham sucks, but. You're a Premier League team, so that's very, very good. So, yeah. even oh, and good. they franchise tag Cam Robinson, left tackle. Yes, they did. The draft, they but no surprise, they selected the number one overall pick, Trevor Lawrence from Clemson. R.I.P. Yeah, sorry, that slipped. My bad. Sorry. Um, the, uh, the next pick was Travis Travis um Etienne Etienne Etienne, the running back from who Clemson, was in the hospital, who was unfortunately out for the season. Rest in peace, literally. <laughs> <laughs> for, his, for his knee. <laughs> yeah, sorry, uh, that's horrible. so horrible. No, we got two big running backs that got yeah. hurt like that, man. Tyson Preseason, Cam- man. Tyson Campbell, the cornerback from Georgia. Uh, Walker Little, the um, offensive tackle from Stanford. Andre Sisco, the, the safety from Syracuse. Jay Tufele, 
There you go. Here you go. You got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, defensive tackle from USC. Jordan Smith, the defensive end from UAB. Luca Farrell, the tight end from Ohio State. And Jalen Camp, the wide receiver from Georgia Tech. Now, overall, I think the draft was very good. Obviously, Trevor Lawrence was had no choice. That, that, was, that was the that was the key there. I did like them um trying to address the offensive tackle office offensive tackle um mm-hmm. um needs definitely for the offensive line. Obviously if Travis Etienne didn't get hurt, you would have had something to run the ball. But mind you they have James Robinson bought up. James Robinson I, I, I and even though I like um Travis um Etienne, I don't think they needed to draft him at that pick at twenty five. I think that could have been for a much needed spot. Like you know almost everything else. Yeah. Um, they did. Um, I think yeah. I think the offensive tackle walk a little was a was a good pick. I think that you could have got um more from more a better offensive tackle in the draft as well. Like I think at twenty five, twenty five, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, overall, I give the draft a B. That's still a good draft, though. Still good draft, though. Yeah. But um, the Travis ETN kind of messed it up. It would have been an A if the draft the ETN thing. Now he's hurt. So it's like there you go. Yeah. So it sucks. See, the thing with this team is that they had all this move around, right? All this turnaround. But what direction are they going for? Mm -hmm. Can you answer that question? Because I can't. They're trying to... They obviously have a new coach, obviously. They're trying to see how these players fit his system. It's like... And what is it? it, Exactly. We don't... He hasn't coached in like two years. (laughs) <laughs> that's what's the like, point like are you gonna bring that Ohio State type of or or that Florida type of offense that you had when you were there or what, what what is this what is the identity for not only the team but what's the identity for your coaching philosophy what is the culture philosophy to be honest what is it that's the problem with this team is so, we don't even know what the hell we're expecting so what are we supposed to analyze if we don't even know what they're trying exactly. to do that's the problem with this team, which is probably the worst problem you can possibly have in a franchise. At least the Detroit Lions, they suck. We know what they're going to be about. They're going to be rough, half, old school, run the football, punch you in the face type team, right? At least we know where they're going somewhere. You know? It may it may not mean make a difference. They may still suck. But, hey, yes. at least we know where they're going. I don't know what's going on with the Jacksonville Jaguars. So that is the worst problem to me out of everyone, including the next team we're going to make fun of after this. I don't. At least I know where... Actually, I don't know where they're going either. But anyway, they will make fun of them later. Anyway, know. yeah. So, but they have all these new faces. But they probably don't even know what's going on either, as you probably heard in the news, that they don't even understand what the hell um, Urban Meyer is even doing. They, they, there, there is already there's already dysfunction before the season even started. Yeah, they, they was talking about as far as like you know a lot of the veteran players. I, I get it. A lot of veteran players don't really clash well with college college coaches, college coaches yeah. because it's like yo. That style of play doesn't work. And they're also grown ass men. And they're grown ass men, yeah. (laughs) She was like, you know. They already went through the college phase. Why are we going to do it again? Mm hmm. So, you know, I give, I honestly give it, I I honestly give him, not this season, next season. I think next season he'll be out of there. They'll be looking for a new coach again because, I'm sorry, Urban Meyer Meyer is kind of outdated, to be honest, to be be speaking. He's outdated. It it doesn't make a difference to me, honestly. It's not going to make a difference. They're still going to suck, they're going to be terrible. They won two games last year. They may, they may, they may be lucky to win four. It's still going to be bad. So who cares? So we're going to attempt to have tracks for success here because we're all working with question marks. So the assumption was that they're going to run the ball very heavily. Or that was the guess with two running backs. Now they have one. So I'm guessing now, because Trevor Lawrence can move, they're going to implement, they have to implement more classical type football, meaning he will have to throw the ball a little more than he wanted. But the receiving core is actually very underrated. They just signed Marvin Jones. They have DJ Chart. They have some people there who catch the football very well. So Trevor Lawrence is going to have to get his hero ball and start slinging it. That's like the only way I could think of this could possibly work. Mm-hmm. However, the offensive line isn't the best. But PFF has them ranked 23rd. So it's not the worst. It's not the Giants. You know what I'm saying? It's not the Steelers. So there's something there. So we're really we're going to see very quickly, sometime in September, how good Trevor Lawrence can possibly be. Because I think September is going to tell the story about this team. Me personally. Defensively, there's a lot of young people, and then they added veterans in. So how they mesh is going to show how they're going to be able to play also. They were horrific last year, but they had no veterans. Now they do. 
So if they're able to stay together and get coached up by the veterans and the coaching staff, then this team actually, assuming they have a direction and identity that we'll be able to see, they actually might put together six, seven, six or seven wins. Why? Because this division sucks. <laughs> That's the biggest reason. So, yeah. Yeah, it, I can see them easily hitting three and three in the division if they actually have a direction that they're going towards. And then they're playing all the other fourth place teams. So, which are just as bad as you are. So it's like, all right, so then they have a chance to win those games. It's true. It's true. But I don't see it. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that on Monday's episode about what we really think they're going to do. But it's about what their ceiling is. And the ceiling is if their direction hits somewhere that is positive, they actually have a chance to win about six or seven games. Correct. But that's their ceiling. Literally. Now, let's have some jokes, shall we? Houston Texans. Uh, the Houston Texans. 4-12 and last season. The fact that they won 4-12... and is actually astonishing. It's actually amazing. because they had a top five. Because player. their quarterback is literally had to carry due to all four of those wins. One of those wins came against. The no, talk about that. Yeah, whatever. but they. But yeah, but um, I honestly speaking, like, what, but everything that happened to them this year, this off season alone, who that said quarterback, for example, that not even not even that 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 too, but just with the coaching staff. Anyway, because they have fired, they have fired Brian, o, Brian, o, um, Bill O'Brien. Brian, what September? In September, October. So it's like they had Romeo, Romeo Cannell, pretty much doing his thing right there, did the best he could with this team. I mean, he wasn't a good coach, anyways. So. I mean, I mean, he did what he could. He did what he could, honestly. He got he he was the oldest coach in the game, so that's I'm happy for him. He's but, a garbage coach. We know. Kansas City knows. Yes, but um, they went four and twelve last year, and with everything going on. It just seems that crap always seems to find them. Yeah. No matter what. They were 18th on offense because they were 4th in passing again because that's said quarterback. But 31st in rushing. Duh. And uh, they were 27th on defense. 24th in passing. 32nd in rushing. Duh. I gave their offseason a C-. minus. Why? Because the fact that Nick Casario was able to get players in the roster alone, I give him a C- minus for that. The only reason. Only reason. Originally... I gave them a flat, a big, big, fat F. You fail. You fail. I originally gave him an F. But I had to agree with Juan that it was very impressive that Nick Casario was able to get players, bodies on this team, that he was able to convince, you know, <laughs> used car salesman type, type of style, these players to come to this team because oh, this team did. is hot garbage. And there were situations where the people thought that they would probably go 0-17. It was that they bad. go bankrupt. Like it was really bad. <laughs> with everything going on, first of all, it was terrible. But veteran additions. Now, when I say they got a lot of people in the team, they yeah. got a lot of people. Almost one page full. Oh yeah. Just on additions alone. Yes. Insane. They select. They they, they signed Tyrod Taylor. Just let's go. Let's go for just notables. You don't gotta say them all because most of these people. Wouldn't make a roster to begin with. Okay. So, just, like, go with notables. You said Tyrod Taylor's one of them. To, uh, Ryan Finley. Yeah. Uh, Philip Lindsay. Mark Ingram. Rex Burkhead. Damn, really? Uh, uh, um, Anthony Miller. Chris Conley. Alex Erickson. Chris Moore. Ryan Izzo. Marcus Cannon. Lane Taylor. Cole Toner. Justin Britt. Shaq Lawson. Demarcus Walker. Who they want to trade him later. Yes. Oh, Shaq Lawson. <laughs> yes. Malik Collins. Vincent Taylor. Jaleel Johnson. Jordan Jenkins. Uh, there's a lot of people. Like there's ton more. Uh, they traded for Anthony Miller. Joe Joe Thomas can't. Uh, Joe Thomas. No, there's somebody. That's else. not the Joe Thomas. I was about to say. I was. I was. He came out and <laughs> Head coach David Cully. Yes, and Terrence Brooks. Yeah, yeah Terrence Brooks too. Yeah. Um. So, so y'all know who that man is. He's the Ravens quarterback coach. Just, 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 just throw it up there. Just, just, just to show something. Yes, David Cully. Yeah, that that's their head coach, a guy who. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. departures. Departures. Um, Duke Johnson, Will Fuller, Randall Cobb, Zach Fulton, Nick Martin, JJ Watt, the franchise. JJ Watt. Uh, you said his team is so ass. I can't stay here anymore. Oh, of course not. Smart Carlos man. Watkins, Brennan Scarlett, uh, Garcon Conley, and Brian Anger because he was so angry he had to leave. And a lot of trades. A lot of trades too. Which yeah. Nah. We're not getting to that. Um, and somehow, some way, 
Deshaun Watson is still on this on this on this on this roster. I don't know why, because nobody wants to get a guy who's probably going to jail. That's now, why. now, now, let's be honest. The I give the offseason a D minus only because the impressiveness of getting this. But other than that, this has been a a crap show of a offseason. It's probably the worst offseason I've ever seen in I, ever. I probably because look, we're, gonna, we're just gonna keep, Deshaun Watson didn't want to be there regardless. He paid him all his money. Now people talk about oh, he paid him all his money. You know, on your contract, yes. I agree with that. I personally agree. You sign a contract, you're stuck there, whatever. But you managed to not only devalue his trade value before this allegation stuff happened, you could have had a chance to get the get, get the get the farm for him and let, let him be someone else's problem. But no, the McNair family, the McNair family, Cal McNair, is an idiot. Just like his daddy, right? I guess I don't want to disrespect the dead, but the McNair family doesn't know how to run football and run a football team. They don't. Clearly they don't. And you could have had the farm for the Sean Watson. Could have. Could have. And you dr- fumbled the bag big time. Now nobody wants him. And they do want him. They're going to get way, way less than what you were originally going to get. So, in like April. Yeah. So, you're an idiot. Whatever. Oh, well. Go to the draft because the draft didn't get any better, actually. It gets, oh, this will be fast. It gets worse, actually. They drafted. They don't have any draft picks. They didn't drive into the number 67 pick. I think that's the third round. Thanks, Bill O'Brien. Yes. Thank you. And <laughs> Arizona thanks you, too. <laughs> Arizona thanks you, too. Um, Davis Webb, the quarterback for Stanford, which he's not on the team anymore. He, he Are got, you serious? Yeah. You got he, cut? Yeah, 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 yeah. He got cut. <laughs> he's not on the team anymore. You drafted him, and he didn't make the team. It's <laughs> all <So>, okay. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Who Davis Mills? Who you people thought? And, and, and it's funny because they drafted him, saying that he's the first pick in their draft, right? He's like, oh well, we need a quarterback because what happens if Deshaun Watson doesn't want to play? Which he chances are he won't play because he has bigger <laughs> problems to worry about. Then Davis Mills from Stanford, the Pac-12. Oh, uh, Stanford. And that's what I had to say about that. Davis Mills, really? Okay, whatever. You got Nico Collins, the wide receiver from Michigan. <laughs> ah, trash, garbage, horrible pick. He's he was he was terrible in Michigan. Um, did he make the team? I believe they, he did because there's no where else was who else they throw the ball to. Uh, uh Brevin Jordan, tight end from Miami, which is a pretty good pick. I like a lot, I like the pick. Um, Garrett Wallow, the linebacker from TCU, and Roy Lopez. The defensive tackle from Arizona, which is kind of iffy. Yeah, this draft sucked. It was, that was terrible. The fact that you drafted Davis Mills, who's not even on the team anymore. You, their first, first round pick. Their, your first pick in the draft was someone who's not on the team anymore. Yeah. <sighs> still, is there really a chance for success for this team? No. Obviously. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry for laughing so much, but this is so laughable. This is so laughable. This is so terrible. Like, I'm pretty sure everyone is going to be laughing with us. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'm pretty sure. Look, all right, I'm going to try to say, because I'm, to be 100% honest, let me see what I wrote. Because what we just said is what I wrote for the, you know, the synopsis I write before the track to success. All right, let me, okay. This all depends who's going to be quarterback. We're going to guess that Tyrod's going to be quarterback. Yes. But if Deshaun Watson was up playing quarterback for at least maybe a few games, you might actually take a few games. Remember, this is this division, so Jacksonville's there and stuff. So there's a chance you could probably take some games there. Um, it's not likely, but... Yeah. David Johnson is completely washed, but he's not the worst. And Philip Lindsay is actually a really good uh, player. Uh, your line, I believe they have they have you ranked 20th in PFF, so he's not the worst line either. So... There's still a bit of talent in different pieces of the team. So there is a possibility that maybe five wins could be achievable. Five or four. <sighs> but again, your head coach is a guy who tried to teach quarterback to a Baltimore dude who can't throw. So I don't know if... Or worse, he's also the coordinator of a team that quarterback did not throw to receivers. <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 that's a, just an incredible feat. I don't know how that possible, but hey, uh, I mean so many. I mean so many, so many options you could have had. 
hey, from said same team, uh, I'm sorry, I think Eric Bieniemy was available and still. I'm pretty sure he said no. <laughs> I would imagine if Deshaun Watson's not going to play, I wouldn't come either. I'm pretty sure he said no. I will bet money on that. He's like, hell no, I ain't going no damn Houston. Fluff that. I'm just going to stay in my home, try to get another ring, and then leave the year after. You know, to like Cincy or something. I'm pretty sure Zach's hair is going to be gone. So, like, maybe like Cincy, which it's Joe Burrow and Eric Benemy, hey, you know? Well, that's something to talk about next, yeah, year. next year. But, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, 413 I have written here is the highest they can go. That's, that's like being nice, actually. Being nice, actually. Hey, you can play Jacksonville. You get to play other weak teams. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the problem is that you're playing against the West and the East, though. For some teams, that's different. From Since Houston sucks, that's bad. The West, the a- NFC West, that's already should be four losses right there. I predict at least two fifty bombs that will be put on them, maybe really? three. Oh my god! It's the NFC West. Yes, that's pretty bad. And then you're playing against the AFC East. Every team there has a decent to great defense, so you're not going to score points. So I suspect at least two of those games you score less than fourteen points. At least two. Yo. And yo, the Jets may give them the work too. They give them the they work. could. They give them the work. So it's hard to predict. Everybody knows this is gonna be a top three pick, easily. Oh, yeah. Easily. So sorry, Houston. There is no way that anyone could give you any hope. Just, just, just get Sunday ticket and watch everybody else. For real, just, Houston fans, just just get Sunday ticket and watch everybody else I'll play. Watch, watch the Astros. Watch the Astros. So, yeah. Right. Right. Like, right. Because. Yeah, that's because you you don't even got the the Rockets either. So just just like yeah, watch, <laughs> just, yeah, watch the Astros. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Let's go Indy. The Indianapolis Colts finished eleven and five last season. They lost the wild card game to the Buffalo Bills in a sorry very, Rivers, very good game. Yeah. But they could not give the Rivers a chance at a Super Bowl. This team overall was actually very good talent talent wise. Felt very very good. Yeah, the head coach is beautiful. I yes. love Frank Reich. It, yes. Uh, they were ninth overall on offense, 11 passing, 11th in rushing. Wow, talk about balance. Uh, defense, they were 10th, 20th in passing, but second in rushing. And I gave their offseason actually a B minus. It wasn't that bad. For, so they plugged in most of the things they needed. Most. But we'll get to it. Yes. Um, they added Eric Fisher, Sam Tevy, uh, Julian Davenport, Chris Reed, Isaac Rochelle, Sean Davis, and they acquired via trade. Carson Wentz for the Philadelphia mm-hmm. Eagles, who was injured. And Matt Pryor, offensive tackle or lineman. Good yes. trade, too, because they needed some linemen, as you probably know, because people went down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um. Obviously, less, obviously, they lost, obviously, Phillip Rivers, Clay Brissett, Trey Burton, Anthony Costanzo, uh, Justin Houston, Danico Autry, Anthony Walker, and Malik Hooker. Malik Hooker was never there anyway, so yes. that one they won't feel. Draft. They drafted Q- um, Quiddy Pay, the defensive end from I Michigan. Had going crazy. Which amazing. Which I actually scored on on my on my dra- on my mock draft. I had him there, so I was happy for that one. Yeah, that was a excellent, obviously an excellent pick for them. Mm-hmm. Definitely needed. Um, they got Dale um Odin Hedabu, defensive tackle from Vanderbilt. Another defensive lineman. Yes. Uh, uh Kylan Grayson, the tight end from SMU. Sean Davis, the sh- the safety from Florida. Sam Ellinger, the quarterback from Texas. Mike Strawn, the um, wide receiver from Charleston. And Will Fries, the guard from Penn State. I love the, Like I said mentioned before, I love the Kitty Way pick. It was obviously they need it. Definitely what they need it. Um, for the most part, it was a pretty decent draft. Decent draft. Um, yeah, Sean, I, I, I like the, the Sean Davis pick, the safety. I think they need safety help anyway. Yeah, they do. But other than that, most of it was just this filler. Filler and added depth to what they already have already, which is not not terrible. But That's great. That's a great, great position to be in. Which is overall, I think this is a top to bottom, a very talented roster. I gave the draft a B. Yeah, that sounds about right. So they focus on that front seven. They said no, we 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 didn't get to the quarterback as well as we wanted. So now we're going to. So yes. they set straight up. However, that. Brings the question of who's going to be defending wide receivers for your team. You have Xavier Rhodes, but how long is he going to be actually playing decent to elite cornerback for you? Uh, who is going to be on the other side? Who is going to be in a slot? Who is going to be your fourth? 
You know, you got two big wide receivers you got to deal with at Tennessee. So who, that's the thing that worried me about that the defense. That says the only position that bothered me was cornerback. Everything else is perfect. So, offense. They got Wentz, which I, everybody and their mother saw coming in like March. Everybody knew that was going to happen. Yeah. And, um, and I don't hate the pickup. And according to Camp, before he decided to break his foot in the first freaking day, he was actually playing pretty well until the foot went sideways. So, but he's in track to be back next week to start week one. So, cool. Uh, offensive line, uh, same difference with Quentin Nelson. Got hurt. He's on slate to be back in week one. I think uh, their center is going to be back in week one also. So, they probably will have their offensive line full. I don't know about 100%, but they're going to be there. So, their line is literally like, I think they have second in PFF. Yeah, second. Their line is like one of the best in the NFL. Perfect. Running back, John Taylor's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Marlon Max coming back, beautiful. Uh, Naheem Hines, great receiver. They have a great running back core. One of the best in the NFL. Now, who's catching the football? It's the question. Now, they have Pittman Jr. who's played pretty well. Is he going to make that next jump to be number one? Because if he's not, then there is a massive issue going on there. Unless Frank Reich is so much of a ridiculously good play caller, that don't matter. But I know down the stretch, we're playing against good teams, especially in January. That matters. So, who's catching the football? Because T.B. Hill is washed. Mm-hmm. He's already getting hurt. He's washed. He can't take the top off like he used to. You got Zach Pascal, but that's not a household name. Is he going to be able to step it up? You got more Ali Cox at tight end. Cool, but is he going to step it up? You know what I mean? Like, is he going to do it? You got Jack Doyle, who's decent, all right? But they don't have a lot of house note names. And that doesn't mean much because you, if you go back to all those Super Bowl champions, most of those Super Bowl championship teams didn't have household names on receiver anyway. But they have reliability. Do they have reliability on the receiver? I don't know. We're going to find out. Yeah, that's the problem. So those are the two positions, the two skill positions on both on defense and offense, corner and receiver. They didn't upgrade it at all. So that makes me a little bit nervous. But if their line continues to bulldoze and they run that football, they should be okay. They're easily the best roster in this division. Not best team, maybe, but best roster. Uh, so attracts a success. So they're primarily a zone team anyway. So as long as corners stay where they're supposed to go and don't break, contain, they should be fine. Uh, that pass rush should be the reason why they're a top five defense. That pass rush sounds like and looks like and probably will be absolutely monstrous. This might mirror a San Francisco-ish type defense like it was 2019. That's like their that's their, their ceiling. If they're that good, then the AFC has an issue. Offensively, if you could bring back half of 2017 wins, you're good. <laughs> that's it. This is easy at 12, 13 win team. Easily. If those two things happen. That's all that has to happen. Just corners do your thing, pass rush get there. Because the run defense is going to be perfect. Don't worry about it. The Rodgers Buckner is, is going to make it happen. So, that's going to be fine. Offense, if you can throw the ball, because running is going to be fine. They could throw the ball efficiently. That's it. That's the easily 13 win. That's their ceiling to me is 13 wins. They're that good. If they stay healthy and those two things hit. Yes. Yeah, it's, like, it's not hard. This, everybody knows this roster is ridiculous. Everybody just is questioning about Carson Wentz. There's more questions than that. To me, that's their least question but compared to the two things I said, corner and receiver. But we'll see. See, because they played the NFC West, right? But at least their roster build is good enough to compete. Like, they, they ratchet up pretty well to me against Seattle. Because Seattle's defense ain't all that. But they have the defense to stop Russell Wilson. So they have a chance to win. Now, San Francisco, their run defense was second in the NFL last year. If they keep that up, San Francisco's run rush the um, offense it's going to show, and then that means that Garoppolo is going to have to win that game. Is he going to do that? I don't know. So their roster is good enough to go against the NFC West. They can get two or three wins in that division. Then they have to go against the East. Okay, Buffalo is going to be a problem. New England might be a problem, but if they actually match up OD uh, pretty well too because they can start the run. So they're going to have to make Mac Jones beat them. So that's going to be interesting. And I believe that game is at Indy. It's, it's in India. So that's going to be very interesting. They match. This roster is really good. It's literally a top three roster. Yeah, top three roster in the conference. So they have a chance to win 30 games. It's, 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 I don't think that's debatable. It's just health. The health is just the problem. Yeah. And lastly, the Tennessee Titans. I was waiting for this one. Now, I'm going to lie to you. I 
last last season's guy, I said last season that they would not repeat what they did in 2019. Obviously, I was wrong. They finished 11 and five last season. They lost in the ball. They lost to the Baltimore in the wild card round, which was whatever. But yeah, I yeah whatever. It's you, they finally gave Baltimore a a, a win in the playoffs. Lamar, yeah, they're even. They not they even. They both won one in the playoffs. They even. They good. Uh, they were fourth on offense, twenty uh, third in passing. Interestingly enough, but second in rushing. Duh, they had Derrick Henry. He rushed two thousand yards. Twenty uh, fourth on defense, twenty ninth in passing. That showed, and nineteenth uh, in rushing. That didn't show against against Lamar Jackson though. Uh, I gave them a C plus for their off season in general. Yeah, a C plus. Their veteran additions included Brian Brian Hill, uh, Josh Reynolds, Kendall Lamb, Denise Archery. Bud Dupree, Janoris Jenkins, Kevin Johnson. He said Denise Archery. I'm dead. Oh, Danico. <laughs> sorry. Danico. I'm Denise, so sorry. Hello. I'm sorry. Please don't, please don't sue me. And um, Julio Jones. He was fired by trade by the Atlanta Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons. Mm-hmm. Off-season losses, they lost Corey Davis, Adam Humphreys, John o. Smith, Dennis Kelly, Daquan Jones, Jadavion Clowney, Malcolm Butler, who retired. Yeah. He retired. Um, Adore Jax Jackson, Ty Smith, Desmond King, Vinny, um, I'm sorry, Kenny Vaccaro, and Steven Goskowski, who also retired. I might you mentioned it. Who cares? Good for you. That's what I say. Good for you. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, listen to those names they lost, by the way, because the, that's we're, we're coming to for them in a minute. But yeah, the draft. Yes. They selected Caleb Farley, the needed quarterback that from Virginia Tech. They needed badly. Uh, Dylan Rendon's the offensive tackle from Notre Dame. Uh, Monty Rice, the linebacker from Rice. Oh, <laughs> that, that was pretty. That's pretty good. Elijah Molden, the cornerback from Washington. Desmond Patrick, the receiver from Wyvis from Lewis Louisville. Um, Rashard Weaver, the defensive end from Pittsburgh. Uh, Racy McMath, the wide receiver from LSU, and Brady Breeze, the safety from Oregon. That's a cool name. I don't know why. That's a really cool name. Um, overall, I think the draft was pretty good. They, Kelly Farley, they needed it. They needed the cornerback badly because their defense last, their secondary last year was dr- disgustingly bad, Hor- horrific, horrible as one would say. Um, they needed help in the offensive, the offensive line. So I'm like the um Dylan Renzo's pick. Mm-hmm. Um. I really, really, really like the the star we were picked from Pittsburgh, the defensive end pick from. They definitely need help on the defense. They're number four. Um, Elijah Molden was just pretty much depth for for the for, for the corners because they need all the help they can get. Overall, I gave this draft a B. Yeah, so you heard all that on defense, right? How much they lost? Yes. So yeah, that that <laughs> that. Unit needs to improve drastically. Mind you, their coach is a defensive coach. That that needs to improve. Um, and to me, actually, their front seven was even worse than their secondary. Because if you watch any of those Titan games, how many times did you see pressure? Barely at all. They didn't get any pressure at all. The only time they looked okay is when they played Baltimore because they know how to slow down that rushing attack. That's it. Their front seven was so bad. Absolutely abysmal. It was it was so frustrating to see. That needs to be fixed. Had they fixed it, I don't know. They got Bud Dupree, but I don't like Bud Dupree. Bud Dupree to me was a complete product of being next to Stefan Tuitt, Cameron Hayward, and TJ Watt. Hmm. So those guys aren't on Tennessee, right? Uh, unless unless there was trades that I didn't know of. Maybe, maybe it's someone's ultimate team. They're there, right? Well, I would say like yeah, this, this, this ain't this ain't the PlayStation and Xbox. No, 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 no. this is real life. They don't got those players, so he has to be the man. <laughs> no, that's more like not gonna happen. He drafted a defensive end. Good. They need pass rush so bad, <laughs> so bad. It's insane. They did get extra cornerbacks to help out with that pass rush. Good, cool. All right. Now will they pan out? I don't know because they're all young as crap. So how rarely are you gonna see rookie corners? Snap. No. It's very, very unlikely. Yeah, because we didn't see it last year. And then again, they didn't have an offseason, but still, they didn't see it last year. Every rookie corner was garbage last year, all of them. So, I don't know. So, that has to change. Now, let's go on the office because that's where all the hype's coming from. Everybody's like, oh, this office is going to be crazy. All right, listen. All right, cool. 
First of all, who the hell is their tight end? I don't know who they got in. I mean, yeah, they lost John Smith. Yeah, who's their tight end? I don't know who that is. I don't know who it is. Um, who's the third receiver? I don't know who that is. Adam Humphreys was the game day no more. Who's the third receiver? So they got two receivers to do the same thing, and one of them likes to stay in the hospital. They had they drafted a, re- a receiver from um that is mentioned before. You talking about the McMath dude? Yeah, McMath, in like the sixth yeah, or seventh yeah, round. Yeah, whatever? McMath, and he drafted uh, yeah, Des- 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 Patrick as well. So I, I guess by default they're gonna make the team I'm because it's more well, they are. They have. But other than that, you that's true. I think that offense on paper looks scary. The Henry, uh, AJ Brown, and Julio, jo- Julio Jones. It was like okay, that's great. Bro. Yeah, like I said, one yeah. of them likes to stay in the hospital. Apparently, but I would say AJ um, AJ Brown got hurt too, but he played with a broken freaking foot. So I mean, it ain't not stopping him. So <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you there. Yeah, but Julio Jones is someone who likes to be hurt. The last few seasons, he's always been injured. So you were so hyped about him, but yeah, he has his own rental room in Correct. the hospital. What? So are you sure you're gonna have him for 17 games? I doubt it. And then when you don't, you only have one person to throw to, right? But, lucky for you guys, you play in the AFC South. So, who cares, right? Yeah. So, this offense is going to be good. It is, Ryan Tannehill is beautiful, even though they did lose the offense coordinator. Just saying. So, we're really going to see. But, Ryan Tannehill is good. A.J. Brown is one of my favorite players in the entire league, so I'm completely biased. I love the bastard. Uh, Julio Jones, when he's on the field, he's still Julio Jones. Not 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 Julio Jones from five years ago, but he's still going to be good. He's, he's still reliable. Um, and Derrick Henry is, is is just a gigantic locomotive. He just just yeah. not like he was not human either. Yeah, yeah. So so they have that guy. Yeah. So they're going to be a top ten offense. There's no question about that. It's the other way around on defense. Are they going to step up? And are you going to stay healthy? Because you have no depth. That's the criticism. All the crap that I was saying two minutes ago. Basically, the whole synopsis is in this phrase: you don't have any depth. That's the problem. So somebody goes down, what happens? Next man up, which nobody. Do you have any? We're gonna find out. That's the problem with them. That's why out. I'm not too high on this team. However, this team does have the makings of winning twelve games, though. If they stay healthy, there's no way in hell they're not winning at least nine. It just depends on the defense at that point. The offense by themselves is gonna win nine games. This again, this division, you're basically staring at four wins from Jacksonville and Houston. Those are two sweeps waiting for you if you stay healthy and your and your offense is at least as good as it was last year. Even if they're not healthy, they're still, they're still four. They wins. should, yeah, they should be winning four wins, and then you more than likely will take one from Indy because you guys usually always have dog fights. Y'all take one from Indy, so that's five wins, five alone on the division. So y'all do is win at least four more, and your nine wins, and you probably hit a wild card spot. Four more outside. That's may, all it, you need. It may, it may be the same situation it was last year. They both finished the same record in this. The tiebreaker is this division. This tiebreaker is pretty much seals the deal. Yeah, and here's the thing. Remember what I said about Indy? How their roster really matches up well against the NFC West. This is not too far off because if you really look at the construct of the NFC West, all three out of four teams have a bad secondary. 49ers, Seattle, and, and Arizona. They all have bad secondaries. You have the best passing attack, almost by far, in your division. So you guys are going to put up points more than likely against all of those teams. And in the AFC East, at least two to three had a bad rush defense, according to 2020. So Derrick Henry should, might be running wild against maybe New England, maybe against Buffalo, maybe against the Jets. He might be putting up 150 yards on them. So you this on the schedule is crazy how we, we're criticizing their roster, right? But when you look at who they're playing, they actually have strengths against everybody they're playing against. So that's why this team still might be able, regardless of the deficiencies, might still win 12 games. But that's going to kick their ass in the playoffs, though. That I guarantee. Yeah. Especially then the playoffs, you're not winning a playoff game. I'll say it right here, right now. That's not happening. One this roster? One, one and done. You easily going one and done. But you still, for the regular season, this is what this is about. You might still win 12 games. Might. You find out if we pick that on Monday. What's mine? That being said, we're done here. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. 40 minutes, you. Yeah. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. We're on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play Radio, Tinder Play Radio, at Pondest Dynasty on Twitter. We're on Facebook and Instagram. Join the Facebook group and be a part of the conversation. That being said, we'll see you guys soon. Peace, love, and happy